Yeah, hi, my name is Dave Cadu, and I'm the Executive Director of the Communications Cable and Connectivity Association. Uh, last year, um, we were honored to be part of the uh, initial Anti-Counterfeiting Innovation Week at the IPR Center in Washington. And um, it is just really unfortunate that this year uh, you will not be able to be there in person because we got so much out of the networking and the opportunity to meet people from other industries and get ideas face to face. And hopefully you will continue, though, this year to get uh, a lot of good information and guidance on, on how we can all target uh, and minimize and prevent uh, the counterfeiting problem that we have throughout our, our commerce um, here in the USA and, and all over the world. So uh, last year when we were invited, we, we had four industries, which I, I found fascinating because I find them all obviously critical infrastructure, just as your own. Uh, we had the automotive industry. We had the pharmaceutical industry, microelectronics, and then, of course, uh, the cable and connectivity industry. And we had an opportunity to talk about uh, some of the issues facing our industry that we've been uh, fighting for a number of years, uh, trying to prevent and to minimize the impacts on safety and performance. And we came together uh, over 10 years ago, really, to fight this issue. This was an issue that was important to all of our uh, industry suppliers. And we now represent uh, the major leading suppliers throughout the supply chain. We have the uh, material suppliers, cable manufacturers, distributors, systems integrators, uh, architects, network designers, as well as even you know the supporting uh, industry like box manufacturers and, and uh, critical items like that. So we came together and uh, it was fascinating to see how much and to what lengths uh, counterfeiters will go to to uh, bring uh, very hazardous materials into the marketplace. So um, it was a great learning experience for us to come together and, and share our industry. Just for a little bit of background, uh, the information communications technology industry is really embedded in all aspects of our lives. Uh, even your wireless uh, uh, devices, they're connected with a wire somewhere uh, to the transmitter, router, wherever. Um, it's actually even more wires. So even though no one ever thinks of us uh, in terms of you know their great new devices and technologies, we are the backbone that makes it all work. And um, no, you know, because it's behind the walls, above the ceilings and out of sight, we really have to do a lot of educating to let people know how important it is to make sure that this infrastructure is, you know, obviously of, of high integrity, because in the end, that is what's going to make your you know, smart devices and, and controls and security work. And if it's not working and if those cables are faulty, then the whole system will break down and We've heard that loud and clear from military, Department of Defense, but also obviously mission critical uh, commercial applications as well. And it's going to be even worse. You know, counterfeit cable is not only you know, a, a problem in terms of data transmission and potential fire safety, uh, but we are now getting to the technology where we're delivering power uh, to uh, devices and your LED light bulb uh, can be powered through a communications cable and also transmit data. So essentially, uh, every LED light bulb can be a node on the internet, and that will help us uh, transmit data to the Internet of Things uh, and to automobiles and to, to every kind of device in your home and workplace uh, for for control and, and, and other aspects of, of uh, our daily lives and, and workplace. So um, the operation of systems and technology that control safety and security functions um, over counterfeit products uh, represents a very serious risk. And we, we actually give you know people three questions you know to, to ask themselves 
you know, what if the medical testing information or MRI scanning images from remote healthcare providers came across distorted as you or a loved one was in desperate need in an emergency room? You know, any kind of uh, blip on the x-ray or whatever could be a very serious impact. Uh, it's no laughing matter, but it is, you know, those are the kinds of things that we think about. You know, would you take your hands off the steering wheel of a self-driving car if the instantaneous response features were delayed due to some inferior connectivity component used in the operating network. And uh, clearly, you know, we don't want any false alarms, you know, uh, or, you know, no security or fire alarm signals to first responders because of intermittent losses at your, at your home. So these are all important things that, that create the critical need, the life safety issues that the cabling infrastructure uh, provides. So when we came to the IPR center last year uh, with these other you know, great industries, you know, we learned very quickly that you know, the IPR center can be used as a sort of a one-stop shop, sort of a, a go-to uh, location for law enforcement and pursuing cases. Um, we learned that industry trademarks and, and trade names recorded with the Customs Border Protection uh, entity you know, is essential. Give them the tools and ammunition to know what's actually good so that they can be on the lookout for that. Um, so you know, these are the key takeaways that, that we learned. And uh, another takeaway that uh, was clear was you know, the alliances that we can make together. I mean, you and, and your colleagues uh, and the other industries taking part this year, it's the same. And obviously, the, the four industries that took place last year, we, we all need to work together to generate public awareness and legislation, both on the federal level as well as in states um, and, and throughout the world, so that we can have a consistent uh, regulation, if you will, or control of commerce to the point where um, we can easily identify uh, the, the bad guys and easily identify the counterfeit cabling. And, and we, as, as again, a group of associations, we can influence and train um, you know, the, you know, for these impacts and, and to let people know what to look for. So uh, clearly there was a crying need from customs uh, and border protection, law enforcement, government and procurement entities, uh, the e-commerce platforms, uh, the Amazons, the Ebays, they all need to know what to look for so that we can together prevent these things and prevent this commerce from occurring. One of the uh, action items that we completed after the IPR center meetings was we actually created some interesting new documents uh, and some articles and, and put them out in trade publications. We're continuing to do so. Uh, one that uh, really was a soup to nuts uh, recollection of things uh, over the last number of years. Uh, was an article we uh, recently uh, published called How Smart Infrastructure Can Become Dangerously Dumb. And that little play on words is obviously focusing on, you know, the, the terms that you've been hearing routinely called smart cities or smart buildings. Um, well, again, unless your infrastructure is, is of high integrity, you're not going to have those smart uh, benefits. And again, if there's one thing that we have learned uh, from the 2020 pandemic um, is that uh, the internet is now as an expected utility. It is really priority number one for dependable communications from healthcare to schooling, uh, to conferencing, our entertainment, social media, every bit of data that is stored uh, in the cloud uh, is really secured and is functional through a robust cable and connectivity system and, and the data centers that are providing that. So moving forward into the next generation, uh, of Internet of Things, the artificial intelligence, 5G, uh, and smart buildings, the really reliable data transmission uh, in real time becomes critical in how our, our modern society uh, functions will occur. So that was obviously trying to get that message out. But one of the most important parts <clears throat> of this past year 
was building our alliances, not only with the four industries that we met with uh, in Washington last year, but also with uh, a whole wide variety of industries where we've all come together to try and push a number of initiatives on the legislative front. Clearly, you know, when you're trying to get things done in Congress or state legislatures, you really need to have some strength behind your 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 action and and to have the um, commitment of a wide variety of our public. So you can see a, a whole bunch of industries here got together and we created a coalition uh, called Buy Safe America. And this was really uh, spearheaded by the Retail Industry Leaders Association uh, and uh, the Transnational Alliance to Combat Illicit Trade, the toy industry. And we were honored to be asked to be a part of this. Um, and so with this, um, you know, we, we've got some really strong uh, associations that really impact a whole lot of our lives. and. What's good is that just in the last year, and, and I, I look at it as we've really built upon the dialogue that uh, we had with Senator Bill Cassidy last year as part of our Innovation Week. We, we met up on Capitol Hill uh, with Senator Cassidy. And as, a, as one small part of this initiative, um, two major pieces of legislation have now been, uh, been proposed. Um, the Shop Safe America Act uh, was was introduced into the House of Representatives this year, and again, try to in incentivize online platforms to adopt best practices regarding their sellers, you know, of particularly of these harmful products, and to get them off of their platforms. And then there was another uh, uh, initiative called the Inform Consumers Act. And uh, that was in both the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives. It was, uh, it was uh, proposed in both uh, legislatures. And it was uh, intended and is intended for greater transparency of high volume third party sellers uh, of online retailers and to enforce that through the FTC uh, and civil penalties to try and again remove, you know, uh, from the online retail marketplaces, these, these bad actors, um, again, provide notification to consumers. So that's a huge uh, activity that uh, we, that we really, from our vantage point, began with our discussions at, in the IPR Innovation Week. Um, for our own specific uh, issues in our industry, uh, it was, uh, it was, told to us, you know, that we needed to provide some really good markings on legitimate and good cables so that um, law enforcement and, and CP, um, CBP can, can identify what's good and what's bad. So we've been working with various bodies in, in the codes and standards world to come up with trademarks that are mandatory or markings on the, on the boxes uh, of cable. And so you can see that we've, you know, we've actually made great stride to make sure various different things like the UL holographic label um, or, you know, the, the cable performance type, the manufacturer, the country of manufacturer and any any uh, trademarks that uh, are relevant. So that was a, a very strong initiative to provide that kind of consistency. And other things, you know, like I mentioned, uh, to really push our industry uh, to to record their trademarks and, and trade names with the CBP. Uh, and we've promoted that through a number of different uh, publications. And then of course, you know, ongoing here, we need to create a portfolio of training materials and webinars on life safety impacts, uh, law enforcement, CBP, uh, e-commerce platforms, government procurement, uh, so that again, we all have the right information for industries like ours, again, you no one really ever gives a thought to cable and the actual infrastructure for connectivity. So we want to help educate those on the front line um, at our ports and, and wherever else in the marketplace so we can do adequate surveillance and stop these guys in their tracks. Um, we've also been taking part in a number of worldwide uh, conferences and um, 
Again, these have been invaluable to give us tricks that we are adopting from other industries into our own. And again, this was all pulled together through the IPR Center Innovation Week, and I fully hope that you'll uh, get just as much information in the conversations that you have this week, and I'm sure that you'll come out of this wanting and, and inspired to, to really help uh, uh, to, to tackle this problem together. It's not something that one company or even one industry can do alone. It's something we all need to do together, and that's where we came out of this important discussion last year. So on CCCA, you know, we've, we've created webinars and, and created things where people can go and, and take information. We have videos of, of burning cable and all sorts of stuff. But the, the reality is, and, and you know, this sounds odd, but you know, we ask people to take our information from our website plagiarize away, take it, you know, it'd be nice if you gave us a little credit, but regardless, we want to get that information out as widely as we possibly can to the general public, to the buyers, to the installers, the contractors, you know, the, the people on the front line, so they know what to look for. If, you know, if it doesn't, you know, doesn't look right, or the price was 30% or more below the standard industry pricing, uh, you really need to think twice. And um, and we give you the tools on how to how to look at that. So uh, we have on our website a, a number of different initiatives, but we have white papers, we have articles, webinars, um, any number of, of tools uh, on particularly the compliance and any counterfeit uh, activities. So I want to thank you for for letting me help kick off this week. Uh, this initiative again is one of our strongest initiatives. And all of us, all of our members were very, very uh, thankful that we were asked to be a part of this. And, and your industry should be as well to try and help uh, combat this problem. And uh, if any of you want a, a further testimonial, I'd be more than happy to, to field your questions and, and uh, we can provide my contact points as you may need. So again, thank you and have a great week. I uh, hope you get as much out of it as we do.